Hi, this is Dr. Matthew Weiner from West Bloomfield, Michigan. I'm the author of A Pound of Cure. I'm also a bariatric surgeon and weight loss expert. I'm here to talk to you about head hunger, particularly after bariatric surgery. I think one question I'm asked quite frequently by my patients who are a week or two post-op and they say to me, Dr. Weiner, I, I thought I wasn't supposed to be hungry. Why am I still so hungry? And in this, this relatively short talk is really um, um, designed to address that question. And I think the first thing that we have to, to do is define what head hunger is and um, try to separate it from what real hunger is so that we can give you the tools so that you can um, um, tell the difference between the two. And, and they have to be treated differently too. You have to respond to them differently. So first let's talk about head hunger. Head hunger is usually the desire for a single food. It's this one thing that you, that you really desire more than anything else. Um, it may be a group of food like a cookie, whether it's an Oreo or a chocolate chip cookie, doesn't matter to you, but you're looking for a cookie um, and, and you're focused on a single food. Um, it's often associated with headaches, um, fatigue, and then a, a rumbling or a growling of the stomach. A lot, we've been trained to believe that a growling stomach means a hungry stomach, but I, I'm not really convinced that that's the case. There's a million reasons why your abdomen can rumble and growl. And in fact, most of the, uh, most of the sounds that we hear are actually from the small intestine moving around, not the stomach. And, if, and our small intestine is centered around our belly button and that really doesn't play a huge role in hunger, not nearly the same way our stomach does. Our stomach is actually situated quite high. In fact, a good portion of it is underneath the breastbone. And um, for this reason, um, the, the real hunger that we'll feel will be up higher, where if you have kind of a cramping or rumbling in the abdomen around the belly button, that to me is more a sign of your, your intestine kind of peristalsing or squeezing food through. It may be, in fact, a reaction to something that you ate a few hours ago that you didn't like or your intestines didn't like, I should say. So these are some characteristics of what head hunger is. Um, and let's contrast that to uh, real hunger. Uh, real hunger is desire for food, any food. And it typically is a healthy food, not a calorie dense food like a cookie or an Oreo, but something like, a, like chicken or vegetables or a piece of fruit or some nuts. Um, these are things that you desire when you are really hungry because your body needs nutrition and it's going to point you toward nutritious foods, not calorie dense um, uh, processed foods. And again, it's typically felt in your upper abdomen or oftentimes your throat. And I think the, probably the best sensation that you can pay atten attention to is heightened salivation and a increased sensitivity or pleasure from food. So, uh, the French always say hunger makes the best sauce and there's a lot of truth to that that when you are really really hungry all food tastes delicious and so if you have this heightened taste uh, when you do eat that's a sign that this was real hunger when that chicken broth is delicious that's real hunger but we really don't see that much because bariatric surgery almost completely eliminates real hunger for at least the first three months, generally for the first six months, and in some patients up to 12 or 18 months, they have absolutely no hunger. And patients say, you know, I gotta remind myself to eat um, because I just don't get hungry. I hear that time and time again, both gastric bypass and sleeve gastrectomy patients. Um, and, and we see that bariatric surgery eliminates real hunger. So when you're feeling that hunger at two weeks out, one week out, that's a clear sign to me that this is head hunger that this is food addictions, that this is you longing or missing a food that used to bring you pleasure or comfort in the past and, and it's kind of coming back. It also really what head hunger is, is it's a food addiction. And food addictions need to be treated like other addictions. The, the treatment for addiction to, to tobacco is to quit smoking. The treatment for addiction to alcohol is to completely quit, um, quit drinking alcohol. Obviously we can't quit eating, but we can quit eating those calorie dense processed foods that are so addictive. We can quit eating uh, wheat containing or gluten containing foods that are very, very addictive. Um, and look at those things that are driving our addiction. Recognize that what we're seeing is really withdrawal symptoms 
from our addictions to, to, to these foods, eliminating them and moving forward and teaching our body to respond to real hunger and not becoming a slave again to the food addictions or toxic food cravings that we um, can, can experience and that what's driving your head hunger. So in summary, head hunger is not real hunger. It's a food addiction and it has to be treated as such. It's typically short-lived and once you get a few weeks further down the road, it's the, the sensations and the, and the um, drive for, for these toxic foods are going to decrease. Um, the immediate post-operative period is without question your best time to break it. And what I will do with some patients, and I do this very cautiously, and I never do this within the first month, but maybe two months or so, if you're still complaining of head hunger, still really desiring the pizza, the burgers, the fried foods, the sweet foods, I'll say, you know what? I think you should try some. Because your experience, particularly after a gastric bypass, less so than a sleeve, but we'll see this after a sleeve too, your experience with these, this fatty or greasy meal after surgery at about two months or so will be incredibly unpleasant. You'll in develop intense abdominal pain. You'll probably vomit. You may have diarrhea. It will really give you exactly the opposite of what it used to do. And I find that sometimes this, this very uh, strong negative experience with some of these foods can be what it takes to kind of flip the switch. And the wonderful thing about bariatric surgery is that it really takes the pleasure away from a lot of these calorie dense, fried, greasy foods that used to bring us pleasure. You still will maintain the same amount of pleasure from fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, and beans and the healthy stuff that you should be eating. So this doesn't mean that you won't be able to enjoy eating. It means you won't be able to enjoy eating processed foods. And that's one of the most powerful components of the surgery. We typically only see it in the first year or two, but this is the time where we need to learn to love the good stuff and learn to, to stop eating the bad stuff. It's our best opportunity. And we have to practice in this post-operative period telling the difference between head hunger and real hunger and feeding the real hunger with the fruit, vegetables, nuts, seeds, and beans that you need to eat and, and ignoring the head hunger and treating it like the addiction that it is. Um, if you have any more questions, you can check out my book, A Pound of Cure, which is going to give you a, a perfect way to feed your real hunger, uh, or check out our website or YouTube channel or Facebook page. Thank you.